I gotta be a daddy. I gotta be a partner. I gotta be a, a big brother. I gotta be a, a uncle. You know, there's so much stuff that I have to be, and I can't just I can't just let that hold me back. You know, because I know my mom wouldn't want wouldn't want me to. What's the deal? It's your boy Zay back with another brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
And they, they're like, Garcia, knapsack, boom, they give me the bag. And I'm like, you know what I mean? Where am I going? I only had this much time. See, I didn't know about the good time. So when the, when the time came up, I should have had like five and a half months left. But because of my good time, I didn't have that. So I'm like, where am I going? And then as the sheriffs or as the officers walking through there with this folder calling everybody out, he says, Chavez County, that's where I'm from. And I'm like, Chavez County? Why am I going back to Chavez County? I think right away I'm getting new charges or something. I don't I don't know what it was. Boom. I come into Chavez County. Um, well, they transport me from over there back to Roswell. And I didn't. this, this is the thing. I didn't know that it, my time was done and all this stuff. I had to come over there. Something was going on with the court date that I missed, but I had to be in Roswell. And then they were going to release me from there, right? And they don't do the midnight release no more because someone got ran over. So I had to wait, I guess, till the following day, a couple days. But I was waiting on my... Um, JNS, my judgment and sentence, to come in the mail so that I can get my credit for my time. It's it's a big old process. But anyway, so I get to Chavez County, you know, right away as soon as I get in there, I'm looking for somebody I know like, yo, did you hear anything? What's going on? What's up? You know, I'm panicking at this point because they said something happened to my mom. I didn't know what happened. Boom, right away I get in there, they dress me down, they put me in Fox. That's the gladiator pod, that's for the people that fight, you know. It's a crazy pod. I go up in a Fox, you know, um, if you know jail, you know right away you can't make no calls. You know, you can't do nothing like that. Especially when, you, when you're first coming in, you can. When you're getting transported from another, another facility, you can't. You go straight into your unit. So I get into the unit, put my stuff down, check out the roommates, whatever, whatever. I still don't know why I'm in Travis County <clears throat> at this point. That night, um, my family got wind that I was in Chavez County, so the money comes through for the phone time. I got a slip, boom, $60 on your books. So I was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna call home tonight. I'm gonna see what's going on, cause like like I said, they were real short with me didn't tell me what was going on. All they told me was that something happened to my mom. That night, I start I start calling, I start calling. They're not picking up. They're not picking up. So I'm already irritated. I'm super irritated because of that. You know, I'm just just in there. I'm like, yo, I know for a fact that I have a couple months left. What am I doing in here? Why am I back here? Is it new charges? What is it? But like I said, it turned out that it was that court date. So anyway, the phone call. Um, I didn't get through. I didn't get through that night. So, I'm already in a bad mood. I'm sitting on the table with my hands on there, and then this dude, he's like, yo, let me get a phone call. He's actually dating my cousin. And I'm like, bro, I'm not gonna give you a phone call. I just walked in here, but you know, people try to press up on you, whatever. He's like, yo, let me let me get a phone call. And I'm like, bro, I'm not giving you no phone call. Like, like literally, I'm not giving you no phone call. I'm not in the fucking mood. Back up, you know what I mean? So, that was that. Everything was left alone. And I remember I was looking at Israel, and this dude, this sucker, he blindsided me from the back, and he hit me, boom. I had a bottle with ice in it. I hit him in the face with the water bottle. You know, we started getting it up towards the door. Uh, I can remember my homie Kelly, he was yelling, hit that fool, hit that fool, Zay. So I ran him into the back. I ran his back into the door, and he let go. He had me in a headlock. He scratched my gums. It was stupid, man. It was so stupid over a phone call. So, boom, they come in, lay us down, take us out the unit. Everybody in the unit's like, yo, Zay didn't provoke that. Leave him in the unit. Leave him in the unit. Blah, Zay, blah, Zay. So they decide to leave me in the unit, okay? Boom. So I'm in the unit with the homies. Still don't know why I'm in Chavez County. I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? That night passes. The next day, I get up to make a phone call. And and I, I jump on the phone. Do, do, do. Put my, put my pin in. It says, you know, it's blocked. Your phone's blocked. And I'm like, what's going on? Boom, boom. Try again. Phone's blocked. So I go to the button and I start I start banging the button like, yo, why is my why is my phone blocked? What's going on? Nobody's saying nothing. At Four o'clock comes around and there's this sergeant. I'm not going to say her name, but it, it sucks because she's close with my family even. She comes in here and she's like, you're you're on lots of privileges for that fight. And I'm like, but I didn't, I didn't even start that fight. I was defending myself, you feel me? Because I didn't want to give somebody phone time. And, and that ain't no dry stitchy. They knew what was happening. This fool is screaming about it. He's, a, he's an idiot. But so, boom, they put me on loss, loss of privileges for two weeks. So now I can't make no phone calls. I'm pissed at this point. I'm telling her something's going on with my mom. Please call, miss. Please call. And she's like, <clears throat> you're lying. You're trying to get phone time because you're in trouble. Just bullshit, bro. And I was so hurt. <clears throat> I was really hurt about that shit. So uh, I didn't get no call that night. The next day passes. Boom, the homie decides to give me a call. He's like, yeah, I can help you out. This is where I really hit rock bottom. So I get on the call, the phone and I call home, you know, and I'm like, yo, what's going on? I haven't been able to get down or, or to get through to nobody. What's going on? Tell me something. I start calling my grandma. I'm calling everybody that I don't call. You know what I mean? And uh, I finally talked to someone and they're just like, 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Kept saying I'm sorry, and I'm getting, I'm getting pissed at this time. Like I know something happened to my mom. I could feel it, and I'm just like, say it, tell me, tell me she's dead. I'm yelling into the phone. I pulled the phone out the box, out the box. I ripped it out. They wish they never told me she was dead. They're just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm pissed, bro. I go up to my room. I start punching the door until they opened it. And like I said, you can't show no emotion in there, man. It's so damn rough. Like you cannot show emotion. So I'm sitting there. I'm a mess. And I'll, not, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. My brother Kip and my brother Little Joe, they walked in there and they told me, get your ass up. Get your ass up. We're going to pray. Like, we're going to pray right now, bro. I swear to God, I was bawling, bro. I was bawling. I knew my mom was gone. I knew that there was nothing I can do. I knew that I had my dumb ass self in prison when I should have been out there protecting her. And I I knew it. You know, it, and everybody always tells me, Star always tells me, everybody tells me, don't blame yourself. But... To this day, I still do because I should have been out. You know what I mean? Like, I really shouldn't have been in there. So that night, you know, the guys made a circle. We all held hand and prayed. And it's crazy, man. Like, everybody in that unit was tearing up, bro. I mean, killers in there. You know, fully tatted killers in there. And they were tearing up. Everybody was just, just taking care of me. Like, yo, dog, you know, you're going to be okay. You're going to get through it. Everybody in there treated me like so good. But specifically, little, little Joe and Kipper, man, they... They really got me through that shit. I was tripping. I didn't know when I was getting out. I didn't know what was going on. And by the grace of God, and it's crazy. I seen Pastor Savino. He's a pastor at our local church. I seen him. When I didn't know what was happening, I went to church with him. And he kept telling me things that just made me think, you know, like, you need to pull to God. And five days later, he was doing my mom's funeral, you know. But, so that night. Um, I can't sleep, you know, I'm tripping, my mom, I know my mom's gone, I still haven't got confirmed, all they kept saying was I'm sorry, but I didn't, I didn't know, you know, what was really going on, they told me she was hurt, so, that morning at 4, I was kind of dozing off, and I heard something slide under the door, and I, I swear, by the grace of God, man, like, that, that's the only thing it can be, it was my, my JNS, and I grabbed my JNS, and it said that, it said that, uh, you know, my time was done, they gave me credit for, like, Day, they gave me credit for like 41 days from like three years back when I first got the charge because it's all the same charge. They gave me credit for those days, man, and, and I, ha I was to be released that morning. So I start, I start dabbing the homies like, "Hey, man, I love y'all. You know, I'm, just, I got, I'm going. You know, all this shit. I'm getting out." That morning, man, I got the JNS and I stayed up. I was pacing back and forth there, like just trying to sleep. I couldn't sleep. They were to release me at 8:30 in the morning. I start calling me, everybody make sure someone's here to get me, right? So, boom, I get out. I remember when I got out, I, I just, the way I felt, it was like I didn't want to be out, man. Like, it, it was so different that my mom's gone, you know? First thing I wanted to do, to be honest with y'all, you know, off of a year away, like, first thing I wanted to do is eat my mom's food. You know, I wanted to spend time with her. I wanted to smoke a cigarette with her. I wanted to just, you know, I wanted to see my mom, and I couldn't. She was gone, you know, and, and, and by this point, I knew she was dead. One of the sergeants, he called me in there and talked to me. His dad actually died three days before, you know, and this, this lady sergeant that told me that, that, like, it's close with my family. She tried to tell me sorry. I, I just flipped her off. I was so hurt, you know. I couldn't really talk. I got out, and now I can talk about it because, like, like I said, you know, that, that girl in there, she's got me through all this shit, man, and I don't think I ever would have been able to do it without her, honestly. I probably would have kept hurting people and just stupid shit, but she's got me through it. I get to my house, I start the same house, and everybody's out there, you know, like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? This is what happened. Your mom was killed. Like, what are we gonna do? And I started to think about it, you know, and I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to relax. I just wanted to wind down. I just wanted to forget about everything. <clears throat> I just wanted to be alone. I didn't want to be around a single person. I just wanted to just remember, you know, and not accept it, you know, because I, I kind of knew my mom was going to live forever. I knew she was going to outlive me, and that's not the way it happened. And uh, it was just crazy, man. Like, I just wanted to forget everything that was going on. You know, I came out with a stack of money. I came out with people waiting with guns, and I just, I don't know, I kind of wanted to forget. So that night, I, I went to sleep, and the next morning, it hit me like a like a bag of bricks in the face, man. Um, I had to plan my mom's funeral, you know, I had to, we had to go meet at the church to plan my mom's funeral, we had to meet at the, at the, you know, the Anderson and Bethany funeral home to plan her funeral, and that was probably one of the hardest things I had to do 
not just the fact that I uh, had to do it myself, but the fact that I had to see my older brother, uh, my older sister, my little sister like that. You know, my, my, my other brother was in prison, my, my little brother was in prison, and my dad was still in prison, but I had to see my siblings. That hurt, you know, like, this shit, I know people always want to say, like, you're supposed to bury your parents, you know, they're not supposed to bury their kids, but... You're not supposed to bury your parents when you're, you know, 23 or whatever I was, 22. You're not supposed to bury your parents when you're that young, you know. My mom was 45. You're not supposed to bury your parents. Your your parents aren't supposed to get killed, you know what I mean? Like, it's not supposed to be homicide like that. And that's the way it was. I started thinking about that, you know. And it really sparked something in me that just made me so angry. I just, I just wanted revenge. Like, I could taste it in my mouth. I wanted revenge so bad. I wanted to hurt everybody that was with her that night. And I just, I just started burning down, like I was on a path just burning down everything that came across me. You know, I was so angry. And like I said, I didn't let go of this stuff until like maybe two years after I met, I met Star because she, you know, I, I feel like she really let me know it was okay to let go of that. But before that, like I said, I was on a path burning. Everybody that came in my path, I would burn them. I was so like pissed off inside, you know, like, like... Like I said, the person that they said had something to do with this is no longer living, but that wasn't just, that wasn't, like, the, it had to be more, you know, like, like, I wanted more people hurt, you know, and, and like I said, my hands are washed to that, any law enforcement I watch, you know, I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm clean of that, I didn't got nothing to do with me, but I wanted more than that, I wanted more people hurt, I wanted more people gone, you know, like, I wanted more people to feel what I'm feeling every day, it was just an ugly path, you know, um, the day of her funeral came, and it was, it was crazy. It was like, it was like a movie, you know. I, I can't really describe it. It was, it was so, it's so vivid to me, but I can't describe it. But it was like a movie. At one point, my sister was walking around crying, looking for her, like asking her to to wake up. Like it was just, it was so bad and so ugly, and it shouldn't happen. You shouldn't have to bury your parents like that, man. Like, it, it shouldn't happen, you know. But. Unfortunately, where we come from, that happens, you know, and, and that's just what it is. That had to be my rock bottom, you know. That has to be when I was at the worst of the worst, and, you know, I didn't really have nobody to get me through that. I didn't really have nobody to push me. I didn't know her yet. I met her. My mom died in. I met her, like, five months after my mom died, you know, but I didn't have nobody to, like, really support me. You know, the support system that I did have for my friends or my ex or anything, I'm sure that they didn't know how to support correctly, like, like in that aspect, what I needed, because I didn't even know what I needed, you know, like, I don't even think Star probably knew what I needed, but the, but we, what we developed over the years, it just kind of took it away from me, like, it kind of showed me that there's more to life, you know, and stuff like that, but, you know, like I said, I didn't get what I needed, and I was angry for a lot, a lot of, you know, a lot of months, I was really in a dark place, I wanted people just dead, you know. I didn't care. I really wanted people to hurt because, you know, they took my mom from me. And uh, that, that was just the lowest point in my life, I think, that I ever had to had to live through, you know. But I got through it. And like I said, I got to give her the credit because she's the one that got me through it. Because without her, I know that I wouldn't be able to get through that. I know that I wouldn't be okay with the fact that my mom was gone, you know. And uh, I think a lot of it, it's just the love that she gives, you know, and she got me through that. Like I said, it was it was my rock bottom. That's the hardest time in my life that I ever had to, ever had to deal with. But I'm here today. I'm okay. I'm okay with the fact of, that my mom's gone, you know, but I hope one day we can see her again. Uh, you know, I hurt for my kids, but I'm okay with the fact that she's gone because I had her for, you know, 20, 23 years or whatever it was. They were the most amazing years of my life. She made it the most amazing. You know, I was real spoiled by her. I was, I, I think I was her favorite, you know what I mean? But I don't know. But uh, I know we were really, really close. You know, she was my best friend. I didn't keep no secrets from her. She didn't keep none from me. Um, and I'm just grateful for the 23 years or whatever it was that we had because they were amazing, you know. She was a really, really dope woman, you know. And we've been through some hard patches, but we've been through some high ones too. And... I'll always remember those, but yeah, that's my rock bottom right there, man. Um, I know there's a lot of people that probably lost their mom, you know, maybe not the same way, maybe the same way, and uh, they're probably still going through it. They're probably still feeling it. The only thing I can tell you is 
find someone to help you or help yourself and it'll get better you know it never stops hurting it never stops feeling like it's unreal i never stop waking up sometimes and thinking this isn't happening i'm gonna call her you know i still deal with that but what i can tell you is that it does get easier after the years you know when you accept it um it does get easier and it, you know the worst thing you could do is is to drown that pain with drugs and shit like that it don't ever get you nowhere, you know, because you're still going to have the pain plus an addiction after that. So don't do that. But, you know, like I said, if you're going through that, just know that there's a brighter day. It's at the end of the tunnel. And you just got to keep going forward. That's my rock bottom story. I hope y'all liked it. Y'all stay tuned for the uh, top of the mountain story. We're going to have that to my highest point in life and where things turn, you know, turned around. Because like I said, I'm OK with it. I'm happy now. And that's how I have to be. You know, I got to be a daddy. I got to be a partner. I got to be a, a big brother. I got to be a, a uncle. You know, there's so much stuff that I have to be. And I can't just I can't just let that hold me back, you know, because I know my mom wouldn't want, wouldn't want me to. And for a lot of years, I did. You know, I stayed in that. I stayed in that darkness. But um, I got out of it, you know. And uh, it's thanks to my girl. My mom used to always tell me, when it's completely dark, look in the sky for a Look in the sky for a shining star. I always use that with her because she really got me out of all that shit. And it was a real dark time, but, you know, her brightness and her life or whatever brought me out of that. So here we are today and we're out of it. And I'm okay with that, you know. But, uh, yeah, like I said, that's my rock bottom, man. I hope y'all enjoy it. Uh, like I said, if you're feeling that, man, it gets better. Just You just got to hang in there. So y'all stay tuned. Um, y'all stay tuned for the, for the come up story because it's going to be a real good one. Uh, we got the giveaway shit coming. I just gotta, I just gotta get back to it, man. I've been slacking on this. I really just been trying to be with my family and chill, but um, I wanna get to it. We're gonna vlog tomorrow. We'll be going to Albuquerque, so um, y'all look forward to that too, man. But hey, I'm gonna see y'all the next one. I'm Zayn. I'm out.